All right, so I've removed the five pin AB connector socket and this is what is left. You can tell that there was a little bit of solder that, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. On the L, the one next to L607 to the upper left of that, you'll see that there's some solder that looks like it goes into the pin itself and that was already there um, from the factory it looked like. Same thing with the L606 in the middle there's some some solder that just looks like it goes into that that pin so um, I don't know I didn't do that it was like that from the factory so I hope everything's gonna be okay with that but now that that's out I will assemble the 8 pin DIN connector socket uh, from the 5 pin and I'll show you that in a second. Okay and here we have the original 5 pin AV connector on the left and an 8 pin updated one on the right the reason that we replaced it is because we didn't have enough pins to add RGB to our AV cable um, without retaining the original capabilities, which is composite out. So the right one has all the same pins as the left one, so it still does composite out, stereo out, um, but it also adds three more for RG and B, uh, so that we can do RGB out. Now, because there's no C-Sync, no dedicated sync pin, we're going to be using composite the composite sink and um, so that's going to be built in so that's so that we only have to add the three more pins um, what i did though is remove the bottom of the eight pin connector this is it it didn't have these two extra pins that you can see in the front because uh it, i don't know why it actually doesn't have it but that one was on the five pin so i just took the bottom of the five pin out and swapped it over the other thing you have to do is the extra three pins because they're not actually going to the board the board doesn't have uh, see these all go into the board the board doesn't have the holes for these three pins right so you actually have to take some um, wire cutters or my wire cutters wire cutters like this and you snip off the the edges or the extra you know the, the parts that it protrude from the bottom and you snip them off these top three so that you can um, still get this connector in onto the board without having those extra holes now what you're going to do anyway is you're going to solder the rg and b to the top of these so you don't need that you don't need it to go into the board so that the, all we're doing is we we took an eight pin connector snipped the three extra pins um the extra protruding part off so that it doesn't interfere with putting it back on the board the other pins are exactly the same because we took the bottom off of the five pin and put it into this one so it's all we're doing is adding those three pins on top and then we're going to be soldering to the top of them from here okay so let me work on soldering that back on and i'll be right back okay the eight pin connector is in you see there's the av connector with eight pins and all i did was just solder everything back the way it was um i know it looks a little messy but i promise uh it's not really that bad so there is some solder that's flowing between uh, those pins and the solder points. I don't, that's just the way it was originally, so I'm leaving the way it is. What I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to connect it back up without the shell just to see if the AV stuff still works. It should, but uh, good to try before I move on. Before I add the RGB, I want to make sure I didn't mess up the composite part. So let me okay, try Okay, so good quick. news. I just plugged in the 5-pin AV cable into the eight pin socket that I just put in just to make sure that I didn't disturb the composite video out. And uh, it looks like it's just fine. It's showing no problems. I should probably, you know what? I should probably try uh, just to make sure that the audio isn't messed up. I should probably try that. So let me turn it on. See if we can get some audio. Yep. So success so far. Now I just need to add the RGB portion, but uh, yeah, the connector looks like the socket looks like it's perfectly fine. I'll be back with the next one. Okay, part. so I have the motherboard upside down, and here on the expansion port connector is where I'm going to tap the RGB and the five volts and also the ground. So that's all going to come out of there. I'll show you. It's all going to come out of this corner here. I will try to use the color-coded wires that I have here for the RGB black for 
ground and yellow for sink. Not sink, uh, what am I talking about? Black for ground and yellow for plus five. So I use that for that. And that way you can get a better idea of where I'm getting it from. And then it's gonna go into here, there's the, there's the RGB amp. You can see on the left hand side, you have uh, the blue in, the green in, blue in, red in, the five volts, and then the ground on the left hand side. And then on the right hand side, you have the green out, blue out, and red out. There, it looks a lot better. So and you can see, it even says the PC engine on the left and the TV to the right. So that's what's gonna happen. So I'm gonna tap the green, blue, red, five volts, and ground from that expansion port underneath. And then those, the green out, blue out, and red out will go to the three additional pins that I put in the A-pin DIN connector. And that should do it. So let me get to it. Let me solder the expansion ports and tap that uh, RGB five volts and ground. All right, everybody, there are the solder points that you need to get to for the RGB on the right hand side there. And then the yellow one is plus five volts and the black one is the ground. And I'll give you kind of a, that's what it looks like. It's sitting upside down here. This is the connector port for the super graphics or core graphics or PC engine. And uh, all I do is flip it over and get the solder points from there. Okay, here's the top side and there's the RGB amp. The red, green, and blue go to RGB in. So R in, B in, and G in. There's the plus five volts for the power and then the ground. And then over here we have the RGB out. And it really, the wiring depends on the SCART cable that you have. So make sure that you understand the pinout for your SCART cable because I've seen different variants for how you're supposed to wire these three pins there. It just, it just depends because most of these SCART cables are handmade. So if whoever made it wired it with the red to the left, then you have to flip it around. So, but for mine, I bought it from uh, a guy on the Neo Geo forums and he was kind enough to post the exact pinouts. So I knew exactly which ones to go to, but yeah, that's all you do. Just uh, take your RGB, put it in there, plus five and, and the ground to give it power. And then, then you just output to the top three and that's it. It uses the, Cable is wired so that it uses composite video as sync. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and give it a shot and see if it works. All right, let's go ahead and try it. I've connected the Super Graphics up to the Super CD-ROM 2 that has the RGB amp right there. And I have the 8-pin connector uh, going to the PVM. And let's just give it a shot. And there it is. sound yes we do boy that is beautiful I know I've always said you can't tell in this video because I'm shooting it from the camera but it looks amazing the blue looks so good let's see let's see if it starts up a demo mode I want to see different colors I didn't plug in a controller don't tell me it's not gonna do anything unless I press run there we go. Oh yeah, that looks amazing. Blue's perfect. Everything just looks really crisp and clear. The colors pop. Wonderful. All right, so now the advantage of modifying the Super CD-ROM 2 as opposed to the console is that anything I plug into that will output an RGB. So if I plug in the PC Engine 2, the Core Graphics 2, I mean, uh, or Super Graphics, or any even the PC Engine original that doesn't even do anything but RF, all of those will now output RGB because they're connected to this thing. So the other funny thing is, I actually um, tried this earlier on the um, Core Graphics 2. They both, so the Super Graphics and the Core Graphics both have outputs as well. So there's an AV out on the Super CD-ROM 2, and if you use that because it's modified for RGB, obviously it's gonna do RGB. But if you connect to this, here's, let me the, uh, here's the other cable and plug this in. So first of all, the sound diminishes because you're splitting the sound across both outputs, but they're actually both output. So the contrast needs to be turned up way up for the AV out. That's, that's on um, 
just a composite out RCA. So it looks pretty good. Honestly, the NEC consoles output pretty good RCA composite out. But if you go back to, we'll have to change the contrast again. Go back to the RGB. I'm not sure how well you can tell, but it looks much better. So anyway, yeah, that's kind of cool. You can output to both. That'll, that'll actually help me because I do streaming. So I can actually play an RGB while I stream to the stream box. Uh, I don't have an RGB stream box. It'll uh, just output composite to there. So yeah, that'll work out for me. All right, time to put this sucker back together. Right okay, back. time to put it all back together. Now, I realized that I didn't start off this video disassembling this thing, but it's actually pretty easy. So if you just play this part of the video in reverse, no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> All you need to know is that there are five screws that hold it together and then two screws that uh, attach the, well, one screw that attaches the motherboard to the bottom and that little blink, that LED over there goes to the top and that's another screw and that's, that's pretty much it. So if you do five screws, so seven screws total that take this whole thing apart, not bad. And the only one, th the only thing that I felt was kind of tricky is that this thing fell off and I didn't know where it went for a while. Um, but it wasn't too hard to figure out. It just goes right here. If this thing, little plastic, cause I, I took something out and that thing came flying out. I was like, shit, where did that come from? Oh, and this thing, this thing here, uh, where the shielding comes up, there is a little, where did, that little metal screw part there that thing pops out as well so those are the only two things that popped out while i was disassembling it that i was like shit i don't remember where that came from but they were very easy to find out um just there were there, were, there weren't too many places where they could fit so anyway um once you have those two pieces in place all you're going to do is drop the motherboard in there carefully i'm doing this one-handed should be okay they actually line up um, you can see right there there's pins that line up and so you just gently 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 come on now I don't want to grab it from the wrong area there it is it drops into place and when you have all these wires going everywhere you got to make sure that you don't pinch them so I have mine pretty much out of the way for the most part these guys probably could use a little let's come off no it's just got a lot of slack okay so no big deal let me actually route that better so i'm gonna stop this video and route that yellow one a little bit better okay so i have rerouted the wires here so that everything sits nice and flush before before I rerouted the wires, this wasn't sitting flush. This was, but this was not, and that was causing problems when I was trying to put the, the top back on. So now it's sitting all flush, and I've also secured this. There was, there was um, double-sided tape already stuck on the bottom of that, so I just peeled it off and it's stuck there, it fits perfectly. And over here, I have put the one screw that is internal to the, the motherboard. The other screw is up here, and this is for, you can kind of see it there, that's for the busy light for the CD-ROM, and also underneath there, you can't really see it, but there is a little switch that gets engaged when you close the CD-ROM door. I tried it a little while ago without, I, I, I hadn't screwed this in perfectly, or not screwed it in, I hadn't clipped it all the way down. So when I tried to play Lords of Thunder, and I closed the CD-ROM door and I hit run, it kept complaining that the door wasn't closed. So I took that off, I unscrewed it and made sure it aligned properly, then pushed it back down, it snapped into place and then I screwed it down. Now when I close the door, it uh, detects that the door is actually closed. Otherwise you'd have to sit there and poke it down with a toothpick or something. Uh, and as soon as you let go, it, it, it assumes the door's open. So yeah, that's, that's it. It's got only two internal screws, this one and that one. And the rest of it is just held in place by the shell and the screws from the internal shell. So let me put the shell back on 
and then we'll screw it in place. I don't know if I can do this one-handed. I kind of, well, let me see. Maybe I could just fit it on there. Yeah, there you go, kind of. There it is. All right, so when you have everything fitting perfectly, it just, it just falls in place. You shouldn't have to force anything. Uh, the seam is nice and tight. The AC jacks are perfectly aligned. So make sure you don't force it because it goes in there one way, the right way. So don't force it and it should be fine. And here's the, here's the little thing I was talking about that you couldn't really see. So make sure that the, uh, the PCB is snapped in properly and secured. Otherwise, um, this thing won't. It kind of pops up on its own a little bit, but that's okay. As long as it's snapped in tight, the sensor should be fine. So all you have to do now, I don't know why this is out of focus. There we go. Let me flip it over. Is screw in the five screws. So one of them is actually underneath this quality control sticker. And you just have to break through it to take it off. And then the other four just go in the corners. Now, I didn't mention this, but these are special security security screws they're security torques they are not game bit which is weird because the one the the screws on the super graphics are game bits which are the same things that open nintendo consoles but these guys i had to I actually was able to find them thankfully it's a t10 security bit so a torx 10 with a little freaking little thing in the middle it's not a regular torx 10 i don't know why they do that uh, let's see. Here's what it looks like. That's the bit. It's got a little hole in the middle, but otherwise it's just a normal Torx. Anyway, so just drop those in there. So I did notice when I was taking this apart, the grays that I thought were just off, um, they are off, but it was more off because this is actually a super yellowed system. It's consistent, so it looks kind of okay, but if you notice the bottom parts sometimes, like you can see inconsistencies with this gray and then like the yellowish gray on the outside. So, but it's okay. I mean, it works perfectly, so I'm not gonna complain. Anyway, all I'm gonna do is screw those four in and then this one too so those five in and uh, then i'll put everything together and do one final check all Very right back. everything is in place i have the shell completely screwed on it fit snugly everything looked good the ac adapter plugs all lined up correctly and i was able to plug in the super graphics no problem so i put in lords of thunder just to make sure i didn't screw up the cd-rom somehow and that the cd door is registering closed when it is closed Turn it on, there's beautiful RGB. Hit the run button and no complaints that the door's open. So it should start up. And I always use Lords of Thunder because I just love the intro. Yeah. So I have sound on both speakers. So the stereo out is still working. And we can also test, see if the super graphics is outputting video as well. Again, that diminishes the sound a little bit because it's splitting the audio amongst both the adapters. And there is AV composite. Still looks, like I said, uh, still looks good. It's just not as good and it's much darker. So look at the contrast. I have it almost all the way up. So if I switch it back to RGB, I have to turn the contrast back down to a little under halfway for it to look correct. That's because the RGB is being amplified perfectly and I'm very happy with this whole setup. The only thing that I'm missing now is an, is an, is an arcade card duo. Once I have that in place, then I'll be able to play everything made for any PC Engine series of consoles. So look for that video soon, as soon as I'm, as soon as I'm able to obtain one. 
All right, well, thanks for watching, and I'm not sure what the next video is going to be because I had a whole list of videos that I needed to do, and I believe that I have done them all. So just keep an eye out and subscribe so that you get a notice when I get a new video out. All right, thanks for watching.